What the f is the Orton effect? That's exactly what I said the first time I heard about it. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that this video was made in response to hundreds of emails and DMs and tweets from folks all over the world that are just clamoring for my advice and helpful insight into how to apply the Orton effect to their images or what the Orton effect even is. That would be a bold-faced lie and I wouldn't do that to you. To be honest, I've never received one question ever related to this topic. But it is something that I use in many of my images, and I figured it's something that most landscape photographers or photographers in general should probably know what it is or how to apply it to their images. So this technique was uh, developed in the mid 1980s by a photographer named Michael Orton, and his sole purpose of doing this was to imitate watercolor paintings. And what Michael would do is he would expose a sheet of film of a particular composition. It would be completely sharp from front to back. He would take a secondary exposure, except this time it would be completely out of focus and slightly overexposed. He would merge the two together and that would kind of create this um, ethereal dreamy look where the shadows are kind of bleeding into the highlights and the highlights are bleeding into the shadows to really give it a, um, a soft dreamy look uh, that you hear when people describe the, uh, the Orton effect. Now in the digital age, this is a lot easier to do. All right, now this is an image I took in the Blue Ridge Mountains last summer. It's a great example to show you exactly what's happening to a photo when you apply the Orton technique to it. Now I know there's probably 20 or maybe 50 different ways to apply this technique, and I'm not saying that my way is the best, but I do find it to be very easy, and the end result is very pleasing and very realistic to my eye. So as you can see, the image on the screen is, uh, it's already been processed. It's completely sharp from front to back. And now we need to create the out of focus and slightly overexposed version and, blur and uh, blend the two together. So the way I go about doing that is I go to my base layer, command J and duplicate it. I want to name this Horton. And then we're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur. Now, as far as the radius goes for pixels, it's really dependent on the camera that you use to create the image. I shot this on my Sony a7R Mark II, which is a 42 megapixel sensor, sensor, so I want to apply at least the same amount to this. I usually go a little bit higher, so 45, and then you hit OK. So now it's completely out of focus, and now we need to go back and apply contrast and brightness to the image. So sticking with the same Orton layer, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. Now from here, you really want to crank up the contrast. I usually go somewhere between 70 or 80. <clears throat> and this is really going to bleed the highlights into the shadows. So we'll go right there. And then the brightness is usually somewhere right around maybe 10 or 20. Go a little bit higher for this demo though, 23. And then you hit OK. Now the hard part's really done. You just have to uh, lower the opacity of your Orton layer just to what looks good to your eye. I'm usually somewhere around 10 or 20, very rarely ever go above 20. And as I toggle this on or off, you can really see that it kind of bleeds the colors together slightly and it really looks like it kind of takes some of the sharpness or bitiness out of the image. Now, something I wanna show you here, I'm gonna increase the opacity just to really exaggerate this effect. And we're going to zoom into this ridge line 600%. Right there. Now you can really see the orange from the, uh, the sunset. And this is the ridge line and of course all the shadows. Now watch what happens when I disable the Orton layer and toggle the effect on or off. Watch what happens to the ridge line. You see that? You can really see the orange from these highlights bleed into these shadows. So when I turn it off, there's really no highlights that bled into the shadows here. The ridge line is very defined. And then when I turn it back on, you can really see how that orange has crept down into the shadows. And that's ultimately what the Orton effect is. You're blending colors, you're blending the highlights into the shadows and maybe the shadows into the highlights to really create that ethereal dreamy look you hear people talk about. Now, this is a little exaggerated. Let me bring it down just a touch here. Now, if you find that the Orton effect took a, took out more detail from the image than you would like. Uh, what I would do is go to background, command J, we'll name this, whoops, we'll name this sharp. Disable your Orton layer and move your sharp layer on top. 
we'll go to filter, other, high pass. You just want to add a very small amount of this and somewhere right around three pixels typically and then hit okay. We'll change the blend mode to soft light. You can use hard light or vivid light. Vivid light is going to give you the most um, sharpening effect visually, uh, soft light being the least. So we'll go with soft light and we'll turn our Orton effect back on. And as I toggle the sharp layer on and off, you can see that it does kind of bring back some of those details. And with the Orton layer on, you can see that you still have the colors bleeding together and ultimately giving you that watercolor look. And that's really it. Now the use of the Orton effect has gained a lot of popularity and steam over the last five years, especially in the landscape photography field. And I've definitely seen it done, overdone many, many times, but there is a way to very uh, tactfully and subtly and realistically make it work for your images. Um, I don't use it in all my landscape photos, but I do use it rather frequently. And it does work for very specific types of situations, but when it works, it works. So it's a, it's a great technique to know. Um, hope you found the video uh, entertaining or informative. If uh, you liked it, like it. If uh, you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Triple A. Credits are right. Hang up the phone and let your heart break on the inner lane. 24 twice. She's on the phone, but she's staying on Will Shop.